Hello and welcome to another Naughty Egg Draw. I'm your lovely host Jake and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made the animatic for my intro over on my other channel Nerd Access. I'm going to be going over my process over the next couple videos so by the end of it we get an animation that looks like this one. So let's get into this. In starting out, I imported the drawing I made for my last video to give myself a reference of what I was working towards and to help with scaling. The idea of the animation is to get the character to end up in this final position of the drawing. I started with drawing out the TV because I wanted to know the parameters in which I would be drawing my character in. And once I finished with that, I hopped onto a new layer to do a quick trace of the character. Now remember when you're drawing your animatic, you don't need to put a lot of detail into it. This is the point in your animation process where you're just going to be trying to get the timing of everything down for the final animation. At this point I'm trying to find all the major areas where moments would be happening in the animation based on the audio. I go into the timeline and add a new keyframe in those areas. I like to plan things out ahead like this before I even do a lot of drawing because that way when you start to lay out your animatic you already have a sense of timing based on your audio cues. And I forgot to mention when you're placing your audio into your animation, you want to place it into its own layer. I like to place it at the bottom personally, but it doesn't really matter where you place it. I suggest locking that layer as well so you don't place frames on it and start drawing on that layer. And with the audio, you also want to make sure you have it in stream in the properties menu here. So that way you're able to scrub through the timeline and have the audio play in real time. As you can see, I'm making small changes to the drawings in each frame, but I'm not really doing a whole lot of drawing. I'm mainly just resizing and only adding simple additions to the drawing, because I'm not really worried about how it looks right now with it being so early on. It's all about where everything is gonna go and when, and that's it at this point. The reason I like to do it like this is because I actually do two sets of animatics. One that you're seeing right now where I don't really focus a whole lot on the drawing itself, and the second one which I put on its own layer in red, where I take the key motions of the blue drawing and add a bit more sense of motion to it. This process does take a bit longer to do, but that way I know I'm getting the best out of the animation that I can. Now, so the reason I fully drew out and colored the TV is because at this point, it would have helped me a lot more visually. When you start to have a blue animatic in one layer and the outline of the TV in another layer, also while trying to make another animatic in a different color, your brain can start to get a little overwhelmed. And sometimes I'll do stuff like this to help remove some of that confusion. Right here I chose to right click on the blue layer and click transparency and bring it up so that when I draw the new animatic I can see the lines a little bit better. Now at this point I'm going to start going in and actually adding the actual animatic to the piece and I'm going to give the character the stances and motions that I want to see in the final animation. Areas like this spot, instead of the animatic having him sit so static and stiff, I'm going to add a little bit of build up emotion to help keep the animation engaging. It's these slight motions that keep the viewer from thinking something looks off. If you don't have little motions that build up to something, or even things like blinking aren't happening, the human brain will actually start to disconnect from it a little bit faster. Now once I got the position down where I wanted him to go, I had the task in front of me that I've never really encountered before and it took some time to figure out. That task was walking backwards. Now that may sound funny I'm sure, but as an animator learning to do a forward walking cycle is hard enough as it is, and walking backwards I really had to think about how the motion would be. Thinking of how the knee would bend and what leg would do what in reverse was actually pretty weird, at least for me it was. 
Thankfully this was just the animatic and I had a chance to fix the mistakes in the walk cycle later on in the final animation. And now I have a question for all of you out there. I have yet to name this character a mascot, and I would love to see what fun names you guys can come up with. And if I decide to go with one of the names that you guys suggested, I'll announce it in my next video, where I'm going to be going over the final line work of the animation for this. So leave those names down below, and I can't wait to see what names you guys come up with. All right, back to this. I'm doing a build up emotion just like I talked about before. The character is about to run forward and needs to build up momentum. If you ever look at a video of someone running, they don't just start running. The body's gonna make a motion in a direction right before takeoff. And we want to mimic that in our animation as well. I normally go with a downward squash and a bent knee when my character's about to run. At this point of the animatic, as far as drawing goes, it was really simple. Mainly because he was going to be in the final position at this point. So all I really had to do was make the drawing and start placing him where I wanted him to go. The only thing you're going to really see me doing at this part is playing around with the timing of the air time. He left the ground and made it to his destination at about the time I wanted him to, but the in-between motion was really choppy and not how I wanted it to look. So you'll see that I played around with the timing a lot and just played it back and forth until I got it to look the way I wanted it to look in the end. Once I had all the timing closer to how I wanted it to look, all I had left to do in this animatic was to animate the glass on the TV shattering. Now this was a pretty simple task since the glass was going to be suspended at the end of the animation. So I didn't have to animate it all the way from its breaking point to where it would be hitting the ground or disappearing. So I went to another layer for this. Whenever I'm animating something separate from the subject of the animation, I like to put it on its own layer just in case I have to make a lot of racing that I don't have to worry about erasing around the other drawings I have on the screen. But that is pretty much it for this animatic. Let's take a look at the final product by hitting control and enter. All right, everyone, that is it. I hope that this video helped you guys with anything you guys are working on or inspired you to make your own animation. And my channel, Nerd Access, is up and running now, so make sure you go over there and check it out. I'd love to see your guys' lovely faces over at that channel as well. And if you're looking forward to seeing this animation fleshed out till the very end, make sure to keep your eye out for my next couple videos where I finish this up. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video till the end. If you haven't yet, make sure you smack that sub button and hit that little bell button so you guys know when I'm posting these videos. And like always, keep drawing and until next time, bye!